Hello. In this lecture, uh, I will be uh, talking about uh, the second part of operational amplifier. So uh, the other, uh, you know, uh, op amp applications. So here we'll first the first part of this lecture slide. I will be talking about uh, the op amp as active filters. So we can use you know op amp in active filters. And then at the end of this lecture, I will be talking about some uh, digital applications. So we can convert uh, analog signals to digital signals. And then we will be talking about these comparators and skip Smith uh, triggers. And uh, we have already done passive filters, just RC passive filters, RLC filters, you know. So for example, this is low pass filter, high pass filter. This is band pass filter and this is band stop filter. So we define cutoff frequency as the three decibel, you know, cutoff, you know, as. So uh, it is called active filters because op amp needs power supply to operate, right? Uh, unlike the passive filters we uh, discussed uh, previously, you know, uh, RC passive filters, you know, uh, um, because RC circuits doesn't need uh, RC circuit doesn't need any power supply, so yeah, as opposed to op amp, if you use op amp as filters, it is called active because op amp needs you know power supply to operate. So that's why it is called active filters. You know right? Uh, so uh, let's. Uh, so what's the main advantage of using uh, op amp as filters? So this is here's the point. So passive filters have uh, low input uh, impedance and high output impedances, which produces a loading effect uh, and also changes uh, the cutoff frequency due to load loading effect. And this problem can be fixed by using op amp as a uh, coupler, you know, uh, uh, because op amp, as we know, op amp has a very high input in uh, impedance and very low input output impedance. So uh, then it will mm, significantly reduce the loading effect. You can just transfer the signal, you know, without losing any uh, voltages, without losing any losing any signals. That's that's the main advantage of using op amps. And op amp also can be just used as a buffer voltage transfer decoupler to connect a uh, uh, system of filters stages to produce a high, higher order filters, like second or third order filters. So here uh, is an example of uh, the op amp in inverting uh, non-inverting uh, configuration. So as you can see, this RC, this R and C makes a low pass filter, right? Because the signal is taken across the capacitor. So and it is actually input uh, to the non-inverting V plus. And as you can see from our previous lecture you can see clearly right this op amp is in non-inverting mode and you uh, immediately you can write down uh, its uh, output voltage we know the output voltage uh, you know of this uh, so this low pass filter if you need some amplification uh, amplified output then you can use some resist feedback register and this but if you just need voltage scan as a one if you just want to transfer the filter signal here from here to the output you can just use this buffer circuit so let me show you some calculations here so as you can see right uh, this from our previous lectures uh, from our passive filters if you have just r and c the voltage if you take the voltage across the capacitor uh, it, it, it's a low pass filter and we know the uh, we know the uh, you know uh, transfer function which is output divided by input. Transfer function of a low pass filter is this, right? Where FC is the cutoff frequency. Uh, but since this is non-inverting uh, configuration, uh, the total op amp gain is one plus this register divided by that register. And uh, finally, so, but the input to the op amp is V plus. The V plus is the input to the op amp, which is voltage across the capacitor. And you can clearly see um, the total gain, the output gain, the output across at the end of this op amp is uh, this voltage gain 
times uh, this transfer function so that's and you can clearly see right this is the output uh, at uh, at the up amp and if you do some more calculation so the uh, so this this is uh, in just the uh, linear range and uh, in decibel scale so it's just a 20 log whatever magnitude of the transfer function and this can be written as this and you can clearly see at uh, and in, in you know limits you can check the limits at uh, low frequency uh, this transfer function is just 20 log this at higher frequency uh, this becomes this so the slope is uh, negative 20 decibel per decade so the, clearly this is a low pass filter you can clearly see because it will allow only the low frequency signal high frequency signals will be blocked so and if you simulate using this formulas using this transfer function if you simulate the data it will look something like that so if you plot the output versus uh, uh, the frequency in log scale uh, you know this is called body plot so it will look something like that and this is called the body plot you can clearly see this is a low pass filter and however clearly note that in this configuration if you use this configuration because of some amplification factor of the op amp your low frequency gain will not be zero decibel right because you have to, because of some amplification factor and using the same uh, phase relationship if you simulate the phase angle at different frequency it will change like this so i put just put some numbers and this is how you calculate the FC cutoff frequency from the data. And uh, the next one is something like this. So you have this feedback register and feedback capacitor in parallel, and uh, you have some series register. In, and this is the input signal. And clearly, you can clearly see from our previous op amp basics. Uh, this op amp is in inverting mode, inverting amplifying amplification mode so you know the output so output will be just this right the gain of the op amp in this configuration will be this resistance which is here in this case uh, just we, we we can just call g of f the impedance which is the parallel combination of this divided by that so that's going to be your gain and then you can calculate the parallel combination of c and rf using this parallel combination and then you can you you can just uh, play with this and simplify that and finally you get you'll end up with this the, um, you know the transfer function for this configuration will be this this and negative sign simply means it's an inverting and again further if you just take the magnitude of that it will be this and you can check whether it will be uh, it's a low pass or high pass so at f0 the transfer function is one um, one times uh, this amplification factor that means it's a it's a low pass filter again at infinity f infinity uh, the transfer function is zero and f at f of f is equal to fc the transfer function is one over two so that means it's a low pass filter next uh, uh, the same, you know, op amp can be easily used uh, to make second order active filters. You know, as you can see in this uh, circuit, you have two RC circuits, right? It's, um, it's again, a low pass filter because uh, output is taken across the capacitor. You have two RC low pass filters and it's connected by op amp in a buffer circuit. So its gain is one, as you can see, because the feedback loop it's just directly connected to the V minus, right? Uh, non uh, inverting input. So its gain is just one. Uh, so, uh, and since we know op amp has a very uh, high input impedance and very high output impedance, uh, uh, I'm sorry, very uh, low output impedance. So, by connecting two uh, filters, you know, uh, with op amp will significantly reduce the loading effect. Uh, so it can just transfer uh, the signals from first stage 
to the second stage um, easily without losing any signals. And then if uh, two uh, filters are connected, are isolated by very high input and output, uh, you know, impedances like this, uh, you can easily, the, the total transfer function will be just the multiplication between in two individual, uh, you know, transfer function. And this is a low pass, so we know the, the we already know the uh, transfer function for the uh, low pass filter, which is this. And just uh, the total, the net to total, uh, you know, transfer function is just the multiplication between these two. And then you just simplify that. And in decibel scale is 20 log of this, and it's con going to be this. And you can clearly see its slope will be negative 40 decibel per decade because it's a second order, and that makes sense. So, uh, but however, if you make a second order active filters using op amp like this, cutoff frequency will be slightly different. So, how do you find the cutoff frequency? First, uh, again, get the uh, transfer function is the magnitude of the transfer function right magnitude of the transfer function is this and we like to find the frequency at which the cutoff the its transfer function has reduced to 1 over root 2 which is 70 percent so set this equal to 1 over root 2 and then simplify that and find the frequency so you can see it's about 64 uh, percent of fc where FC is 1 over 2 pi RC is the cutoff frequency for the first order RC circuit, as you can clearly see. For second order, for second order, uh, you know, uh, the transfer, the cutoff frequency is 64% of the first order uh, cutoff frequency. So these are some examples you can do calculation. So this is just the uh, uh, first order um, uh, low pass filter. Uh, connected in a unity gain, you know, up amp, and this is the second one. Second circuit is uh, the second order uh, low pass filter, and do the same calculation and uh, simulate the data. And if you simulate the data using those equations, you will clearly see actually uh, the first order, uh, you know, body plot. This is uh, the body plot for for second order, the second figure, and you can clearly see right. The second order filter has much better, uh, you know, body plot because its slope is negative 40 compared to negative uh, 20 for first order. So second order filter is better. And you can similarly, you can construct the active, you know, high pass filter using the same. Now you just need to flip uh, R and C, right? You just need to take the output across the register and do the same calculations do the same calculations so it will be a high pass filter and if you simulate the data it will be a high pass filter and this is the phase this is how phase changes and i uh, now you can construct actually uh, any type of uh, filters not just low pass and high pass so you can similarly you can construct a band pass filter uh, using uh, up amp so for example uh, if you connect you know, a high pass and low pass filter together uh, with uh, an op, op amp, you know, because for good isolation, you need a op amp, right? Uh, in Unity game mode as a buffer circuit, uh, since you have a high pass and low pass, and if you do some calculation, uh, since there these two filters, high pass and low pass are isolated by uh, very high input impedance, op amp, uh, the transfer, the net transfer function is just the uh, product of the two transfer functions. And this is the high pass RC filter transfer function from our filter uh, lecture. And this is the uh, transfer function for low pass RC filter. And then if you multiply this, and then if you try to simplify that, you'll end up with this. Uh, this is the magnitude of the uh, transfer function for this particular circuit. And if you plot that, it will be something like this. If you plot in body plot, it will be something like that. And you can clearly see it's a wide band pass filter, right? Because it has a wide range, uh, wide range. So it's called wide uh, band pass filter. And this is the bandwidth, right? 
we can clearly see this is the bandwidth so bandwidth is defined as uh, 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 FC the signal will the signal uh, drops to negative three by negative three decibel. So similarly, you can uh, construct a band reject or band stop filter using this construction. So here you have high pass filter, you have low pass filters, uh, you know, uh, active filters, and these uh, two are connected by uh, adder circuit. This second part is the, just the adder circuit. And again, if you play with this math, actually, if you do the math and then if you combine, since this is an adder, so you just need to add this two transfer function. And if you simplify that, and if you plot that, the body plot will be clearly a band reject circuit. And in many uh, problems, you will be given some circuit and you will be asked to find the transfer function for the given circuit, something like that, and I will show you more on calculation of this, this.